If you know about the ADI model in instructional design, you're probably familiar with some of the weaknesses of that model. Well, in today's video, I'm going to talk about the model known as SAM, Successive Approximations Model, and how it solves some of the problems with ADI. My name is Olum Diadile, don't go away. Yes, in a previous video, I talked about ADI and how it is useful and widely used in instructional design. But you see, ADI has its flaws. One of the biggest flaws of ADI is that it's very much like what in software development would be called the waterfall model. One step goes before another, and by the time you're done with all of the steps, if there's a problem, you find out that it's not very flexible, it can't really be adapted to change. And that can be problematic. It can imply that you're spending a lot. It can imply that you're not getting results as quickly as you want those results. So, ADI has been a very useful model in the instructional design community, but in today's world of IT, it has also been a model that many people would say has its issues. Now, based on that, Dr. Michael Allen developed what is known as SAM, the Successive Approximations Model. And SAM is based on ADI, but then it makes some very important changes. So remember that the other time I talked about the systems development life cycle, which you would be familiar with if you are in software development. Uh, and I said that, Ad, that ADI was very much like the waterfall model. But you see, in software development, there's also what is known as agile methodologies, which are methodologies that prioritize iteration and they are they give um, faster turnaround time and you have a working model um, very quickly. You see, it's kind of the same thing for instructional design and that is exactly the logic behind SAM. So the successive approximations model is really made up of three key steps and we're going to go over each of the steps. The first step is what is known as the preparation stage. You see, in the preparation stage, you have more or less what you would have in the analysis phase of ADI. You do all the necessary preparation. You gather the needed information for the project, the context for the project, um, and all the things that are needed for that project. But you see, at that stage also, you begin to sketch, to brainstorm, and to think about ideas for prototyping. Because in that preparation stage, you're trying to get ready. Remember that now we're restricted to just three stages. So it's all about getting everything quick and getting it ready to the stage of the prototype. Here are some of the things you might want to look out for in the preparation stage. This is that stage where you want to gather information. So you want to know everything that you can about your learners that is relevant to the learning content that you're preparing for them. Um, you also want to know what they already know. So for example, you want to find out the age range, maybe the level of education, the kinds of things that they are used to. If they are from an organization, you want to know what that organization is about. You know, just general information that can help you have an idea of that learner's or of the learner's context. Uh, you also want to know what they already know. So what's their level of learning? What do they already know? You want to find out about the learning modes that would work best for those learners. And you want to be able to determine the best methods of delivery for them as well. And in that preparation stage, you also define the project goals and you brainstorm, you brainstorm with the project team. That's the phase in which you gather um, the team, the project manager, the instructional designers, the learning experience designers, and you know all the other stakeholders. 
maybe even the learners as well. And in that stage, you plan so that you can uh, come up with what would work for your target audience. And that leads to the second stage. The second stage is the stage of the iterative design. So in this phase, the idea is to design the material, to design the learning, but also to prototype it. You see, the logic here is that instead of having a situation where you're relying heavily on documentation and on several steps, if you can prototype what you have in mind, then the different stakeholders can have a look at the prototype. And based on the prototype, they can make suggestions. So suggestions for what should be taken out, for what should be included, and generally for the changes that need to be made. So the iterative design stage is a stage for prototyping and the resulting feedback from displaying those prototypes. Here are some of the things you would want to put in mind for the iterative design phase. This is that phase in which you distribute the tasks and you determine the timelines. So for each of the project members, you need to determine who does what. So you distribute those tasks, but you also assign timelines so that it doesn't um, just go on and on and on. You assign timelines so that everything can be done um, within the iteration. This is the point where you design storyboards and prototypes in iterations. So don't forget that one of the key strengths of the SAM model is that you're using prototyping as a way of making the process faster and as a way of fostering iterative design. So this is that stage where you design the storyboards and you, and you design the prototypes. And you are also iterative about that, meaning that um, it's possible that as you're getting feedback, you might want to make changes. So you do those changes in iterations. One of the reasons why uh, you need to involve stakeholders is that doing so helps to ensure that there is buy-in, there is consensus. When people are part of building something, they are likely to agree with it, they are likely to support it um, because they would feel that their own suggestions were taken into consideration. Uh, so it's always a good idea to involve stakeholders so that you can have buy-in. And that leads to the final stage, the iterative development stage. So first of all, note the use of the word iterative. It's a stage in which what was prototyped is now going to be built, where it's going to be turned into the actual learning material, um, be it a video or um, e-learning content or whatever that learning material is really going to be. Um, but you see, it is iterative. So what that implies is that it doesn't actually end there. The process is meant to be such that you can always add to it. You can always make improvements. You can always like repeat that cycle, but each um, repetition of the cycle adds to the existing layer such that the existing layer is not wasted, um, but you're moving further and further with each iteration. Here are some of the things to bear in mind for the iterative development phase. This is that phase where you develop the content. It's that phase where you bring out the solution. So remember that you're developing the solution in versions. Remember that it's meant to be iterative. The implication of that is you're not coming up with the final um, solution at once. Yes, the very first solution, the first iteration needs to be functional, but the idea is not to do everything all at once. The idea is to have a functional version and then that can be improved on. So usually uh, that first version is what is known as the alpha version. After that, you have beta and um, you can go on until you have your final version, which would be called the gold version. But the idea of this phase is that you are iterating. 
So because of the iterations, the, you're not um, stuck on having the perfect result the very first time. What you're rather interested in is having a result that is usable and can then be improved upon in the next iteration. So that's the SAM model. I'm sure you would see how it can um, be a huge improvement over Addy. That said, there are definitely advantages to having a model that is cast in stone as against one that is much more flexible. But while Addy has some advantages, it looks to me like Sam has been able to solve most of the critical issues experienced with Addy. So Sam might ultimately have a better edge over Addy. Anyway, the determination of what model to use is left to you. You are free to pick anyone. There are several other instructional design models, many of which we're still going to look at um, on this channel. If you've not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Make sure you click on that subscribe button and you subscribe to this channel. And you can leave a like, leave a comment, um, let me know what you think. I look forward to seeing you in my very next video. And until then, my name is Olumide Adele. I am wishing you a very wonderful day ahead.